All right, everybody. Hello and welcome to Truth Bomb. I'm Jay Scott, aka Crypto Cowboy. Hey, Sandy, the Freedom Faith Warrior here. And we're going to lay on some Truth Bomb today. All right. All right. How's it going, Sandy? How was your weekend? Hey. Awesome. It was awesome. So glad to be back working this week. Good for you. Yeah. And it's gonna be a short week. So that is cool. And uh, right. yeah, I was in a, a, a three day like real estate investment boot camp. So I was inside, but it's fine because it's rainy uh, and learned a lot. So anyway, so wow. awesome. some of the things that I, that I learned uh, was about money. And today, uh, today we're going to talk about retirement. And we're going to talk about some good things and some bad things. And I'm almost a little leery to jump in because I, it's, it's not great news at first. So stick with me. Right. <laughs> stick with me. Um, right. Hopefully, stick hopefully, with the, it, hopefully at the end, I'm going to give us some 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 hope. But um, let me uh, not share my screens. You, you will. I, I have, will. I have faith. You will. Yeah. So we're going to talk. We're going to talk about retirement today and. Um, first thing I want to say is it's like, uh, you are doomed financially. If you do this, that was one of my, uh, one of my headlines, um, that I was going to be going with. <laughs> I don't know if I'll, I'll <laughs> stick with that. Um, uh, that's kind of scary, but here's what I just want to say. I, I, I'm going to just lay it on at the beginning and then we'll, we'll see. But as I'm thinking about this topic, it's like, okay, look, People save to for their retirement, of course, and then they they try to save maybe for a vacation. I don't know. What about you, Sandy? If you were like, what are the besides retirement? Like, if you're going to save, what would you save for? I and mean, what are the kind of things that you want to save well, up for? I'm an adventurer, so I'm saving for a for camper. Travel? I'm saving for yes, my future travels. You know, yeah, a travel, cruise, uh, Europe vacation. All right. Um, you know. It, I mean, we're at a different age bracket, right? So, so we've done the things like we built the empire, like we, we bought the house, we bought the cars, we bought the things and said, okay. And then transition kids, you know, move out, transition out. We don't need all those things anymore. So now it's time to downsize. So when you're downsizing, it gets more clear what is important to you. And to me personally is travel. I love road warrior travel. So that means I'm going to need a camper. That means I'm going to need a bigger vehicle to pull that camper. Um, and I'm going to need the money to stay in those, those campsites. Right. So, yeah. and that, and that can be costly. I mean, people think it's a cheap, it's not an RV rental is at least the same amount as a hotel room. Uh, people think, oh, well, we'll mm. save. No, sorry to tell you, but uh, KOA has kept up with the hotel price. price oh, I didn't know that. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, well, that's true. I mean, uh, but you have, you know, but you, yeah, you get the freedom of of uh, living in your See own little, your own. yeah, your own little place or whatever. And uh, right. well, that's good. And I it's, mean, it's there so. Are, there are alternatives. I mean, and you can be members of, of there's this one membership that you can actually stay at vineyards and farms. Oh, and nice. It's part of this whole co-op thing that you just pay like a membership fee. So, I mean, you, there's lots of neat things you can find out there. Um, I talked to a uh, ranger not too long ago who said a park ranger and said, oh yeah, you could be a camp host site. So you can actually stay at those places for free if you work. So, oh, as like a work doing what? Doing like doing what? You volunteer checking in people throughout the day. Oh, okay. And they'll let you stay there for free. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know about that. Yeah. Look at all those options. Well, that's really cool. And you know, um, and on top of that, you want to save for retirement. So, this is kind of what I get at you getting at. You you led us in, into this really good because you describing the reality of life and vacation and travel. Um, it's not cheap and we're working, we're doing our thing. We want to save retirement, but we want to do this too. All of that takes money. And so <clears throat> bear with me folks, but the chances of you doing that are not good. 
the odds are that you'll probably have to go into debt to take that vacation and you probably won't have enough to retire comfortably. That's just the statistics. The statistics are showing that two thirds of Americans don't contribute anything to a 401k or an IRA and nearly half of American workers have less than $10,000 in savings. And that is really just emergency stuff, right? If you have that and, and good for you, because not even everybody has that. A lot of people right. live paycheck to paycheck. They don't have a month or two of an emergency. My guess is if you did the people that did, so this is this is only half of America, American workers, they are these statistics that have this ten thousand dollar you know savings. So, you know, if if you don't have a job or you're part-time or whatever, it's probably even worse than that. You're living paycheck to paycheck. And I I, I understand this. I have the empathy for it. But what I'm going to talk about today is really not for people that aren't saving. Because if you're not saving, I think you realize that you're, you know, it, it, it's it's a struggle, right? Cause so so you're not even thinking about savings. And, and that's hard. But it is day-to-day -day living. You're trying to keep your head above water. And, you know, I'm not sure what I can say to that because, you know, just keep the faith. And, you know, keep trying, right? You know, Sandy, there's there's a lot of people out there that are really struggling. And, um, you know, I don't know what you would say to them, but I would just say, you know, keep the faith and and, and try, you know, if you might get that job and that it might work into a promotion to the point where you can save because saving and investing is really the only way we get ahead because inflation is, is cutting into everything at Absolutely. 14 to 15%. Absolutely. Um, if you've even went out, I, I went out the other day to a concert and guess what? I spent $40, $50 on four drinks, four, not five, not 10, not right. So, I mean, that's a lot. Yeah. And then the ticket drink. and the ticket to it's get not, in or whatever nine, venues. Nine, to twelve dollars per drink these days is the average. If if the alcoholic beverage that is, um, even even a soda was four dollars. Like so, how are I mean, I just don't see how a couple could go out. Like, I that know. Was just me so double single. it. Yeah, that's what freaks double me out that. is being single and like you know when I go out or do something and you know it's 40 50 bucks I'm thinking man <laughs> I go on a date and it's easily 100 bucks 150 bucks like whoa <clears throat> right yeah. they better be worth it <laughs> they better be worth it <clears throat> that's right be all worth right it. <laughs> so so yeah so it's you know it's tough it, it, inflation and you know uh you know the price of everything you know is is, is crazy so <clears throat> yeah so it's not it, it part of me says it's not a great time to talk about this, you know, because this is kind of waking people up. People know, though, I'm sure they know. But what I what I what I really want to do is I want to say that as hard as it is, if you're not investing. Then in the right assets, then you're, you're really not getting ahead. And I think there's an illusion out there that if yeah, the people that are saving a little bit here and there and if you're doing the. What's the traditional, and this is the other thing I really want to talk about is the traditional advice from financial advisors, is, oh, go put your money into an index fund in the stock market. And that made a lot of people a lot of money uh, for a long time from the 50s in their pensions or their 401ks um, because inflation wasn't as high. And mm -hmm. it, it did work for a while. And I'm just here to say that that system isn't doesn't work anymore, especially if you have a financial advisor uh, that is or, or a uh, investment company that is managing that money for you because their fees, which they don't talk about a lot, it's there, but they don't talk about it over time will erode all of your profit anyway. So let me keep going in, in some of this. So according to Investatopia, um, you really need about $1.3 million, very average number. But 1.3 million, kind of on the average, when you take everybody's uh, that are that are going to retire comfortably. Ouch, you know, like like people who have got a couple hundred thousand, they're like, yeah, I'm doing pretty good. Look at that, a couple hundred thousand, you know, in my in my IRA. No, I ain't gonna cut it, and it's scary. But this is what I want to do. I need to scare people because 
if you were just saying, oh my God, you know, I'm, I'm, I'll do that tomorrow <clears throat> and I'll do that, you know, tomorrow or, you know, uh, I'll catch up, I'll catch up. Then, then tomorrow it could come in your, in your seventies working at McDonald's. Now folks, believe me, this is me. I, I'm telling the story of me. Uh, this was me three years ago, waking up to this and Sandy, I had this, this, I had this vision, I still do, of me working in McDonald's and my boss is, what, 18, 19, 20-year-old kid ordering me around, like, flip those burgers, do this, and, you know, I'm in my 70s. That's my nightmare. And so I, I that nightmare woke my ass up to, to try to do something about it. And so that's what I want to talk right. about and, and today. Social security is not going to save you either. Um, right. Social security is not going to be enough to cover your expenses, even just to live daily. Um, unless that's all you do is you stay in your house and you get, you know, groceries from, I, I don't know where, but, um, it's going to yeah. be rough. It's, it's going to be, be rough. It, that, because that's, the social yeah. security uh, gauge has not matched the inflation at all. No. And so, so you know, whatever they think to give you for housing or whatever, you know, from your social security that you paid into it. Now get this social security is taxable. What, what do you mean you're taxed on your social security? Yes. If you make over a certain amount, they will mm. tax you on oh. your social security that you already right. made. You like, made and so paid. You're getting taxed Ouch. on something that is yours. And so they have changed the tax scales again. Okay, so um, I'm just going to give you this example. And, and hopefully um, there was a newly married couple over the age of 70. And so they put their monies together. And because they got married, you know, mid-year... They, the the government still counts you as getting as the whole year, not just ha not just a half a year when you got married. It's the whole year. So unfortunately, because she had been working before that um, and making an income, and then he had, and then there were some other things, you know, houses, blah blah blah. Anyway, turns out that they made over the threshold of what Social Security says you can make, so they got taxed for their social security that they, they yeah. took in. Mm. That is insanity. That is not fair. Why, why wouldn't they have, you know, you know, estimated or did something? Well, nope. So, so you better have a good tax accountant, right. um, have a good accountant CPA that knows all the tax rules and laws for social security uh, and for all of those things, because you're going to need it. Um, That's a good point. I mean, it, they did not realize that getting married, that that would happen, you know. No. And so you're not you're not looking at that when you know. And they're over seventy, which is right. kind of funny. <clears throat> yeah. Um, no, that's a really good point. And I think that um, you know what I'm what I'm hoping here is to make enough money in my retirement. <clears throat> well, I will be taxed. Okay. Let me explain that, right? It's like if you want to have a good attorney, that's you you hit it on the nail because basically you want to have enough money that you can live comfortably in retirement. And that may, I don't know what the numbers are, that may trigger that tax on Social Security. But so yeah, it's good if you haven't saved enough, Social Security is there, you're not gonna be taxed, but it isn't gonna be enough to probably live comfortably. And get this, if you do work your butt off and make enough to be comfortably, you're gonna get taxed. So kind of sucks. But I would rather be on the other end. I'd rather make too much money, get taxed than have less money and struggle. But it's a good point. Well, well, or, you know, for me, I'm thinking, okay, well, I'm a single person. You know, if I'm going to marry somebody at age 70, I'm going to make sure that they have had a lot of money and their social security is good. Right. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Or that they're really or poor. Or the, yeah, that they're really poor and that way they won't trigger the tax. Uh, maybe not that one. Yeah. Uh, so no. here, yeah. here's another. You to uh, do you want poverty or do you want love? I, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, that's that's the thing, right? Poverty or love. 
no, let's live in a duplex with a door in between. And right. Call it a day. Where you can have love and still not call be married. I don't know. Um, <laughs> so there's another uh, figure that you can use to, to uh, kind of estimate what you might need to live comfortably. And that is, they say, the financial people saying, look, if you take your pre pre retirement salary, so whatever, if you're making, you know, 60,000, 100,000 or whatever, uh, and multiply that by 10, that's what you're going to need to retire on. Um, and so that's that 1.3 million, or maybe it's 800,000 or 1.5 million or whatever. So do those calculations, folks, and it'll, that should be eye opening to you. Um, the other one, oh, this is funny. When I was doing a little research on this, apparently 21% of Americans believe that their best chance of retirement is to win the lottery. That's like a true oh my God. statistic. And we all know about the lottery, like the, the odds. And most people, well, 21% think that's my best chance, which doesn't, you know, pretty much says, ouch, they aren't going to have enough to retire. Um, oh. And that's the, that's, that's their hope. So, so, yeah. What what do, what what can we do that? And and I mentioned before about living paycheck to paycheck and so on, and 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 it can be hard. But know that it doesn't have to be that way always. And catch up, and then try to save some. You know. Well, uh, if I'm at the age I'm at right now, and I have nothing, what what can I do, Scott? Like, well, what what is it that I can do? I mean, what is it that you're gonna suggest that I can do? Okay, you're gonna. Uh, you want me to skip to the end, Betty? Oh, skip I'm to sorry. the end. No, no, you go. You, you no. Just I am gonna at the end. I want to uh, know. I, wanna I am know. gonna get to the end. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Here's the thing. I'm not a financial advisor, and nothing I say is financial advice. This is just. Um, and and to be totally honest, it's like I don't have my 1.3 million yet, but I do have a plan, and I'll share some of that stuff, and we'll just go from there. But here are the. Um, I'll just jump into some of this. This is the this is the the some of this is the harsh point, but I, I think there are four ways that you can ses- successfully build up a retirement uh, that that you'll feel comfortable with, and some of these are going to okay. be radical. But the first thing is stop saving. What? 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 Saving isn't going to get you the there, American but American dream. It, it's right. Save. Put it. You know, save for a rainy day. Sorry, folks. Saving, it's, it's investing. You've got to invest. And I know I'm being a little bit picky here, but savings basically kind of, kind of, t- yeah, it's raining. It connotates that you're going to put it in a bank, I mean, in a savings mm-hmm. account. No, at less than 1%. You that. That's, you might as well just put it in your mattress. At least it's there in your house. I don't know. Um, so, so stop saving, but you need to invest. You need to, investing implies that you're going to, get a rate of return that can actually uh-huh. do something for you. Mm-hmm. And yeah, there's all sorts of complexities and so on to investing. There's a million things you can invest in. Um, but but get out of that mentality of saving. Now, I just said, if you're living paycheck to paycheck, try to save some. Well, at the very beginning, anything you can not spend away is good. But eventually, you will have to invest to actually get ahead. Because remember, true inflation is somewhere around 14 or 15%. The Fed is gonna say that they've got it down to 4%, but the Fed's numbers, they don't report the reality. They don't report all the numbers that we have to live with day to day. And when you add all those numbers up, it's somewhere between 14 and 15. Now, because inflation is higher than it was, back in the day, back you know, before 2018, before COVID, we probably were seven to ten percent, even though the Fed's target is two percent, right? They say two percent inflation is what we what we target. Right. It's never two percent. It's always somewhere four or five percent. Exactly. Um, you know, seven. So now we're living in this fourteen to fifteen percent rate. They're not going to tell you that. I don't have a calculation for you, um, but there are. Forget it. Well, yeah. I mean, now now you're in debt, which is a whole nother thing. Um, which is what a lot of people are doing. They're not saving, but they need to still live and, and it costs a lot more. So they're probably not making as much in their uh, job. So they're putting stuff on credit cards, which I get it. I mean, you know, this is how sort of the American way is. But again, 
that's going to be hard. Now, I'm not a Dave Ramsey at all to say you need to live frugal and you can't have any fun and, you know, uh, cut up all your credit cards. There are times when credit is really good. Um, and you just have to know that if you're going to put something on credit or borrow something, hopefully it's it's going to be doing something to earn you earn you right. something. You if you're buying off. a couch or a, a car even, unless that car is earning you money somehow. Um, and this is where I, I, I was terrible at this. I didn't think of this. It's like, oh, credit card is just an extension of me being able to buy things. I think that's how a lot of people think. Um, what I think now is if I put anything on a credit card, Will is this could this potentially make me money? And I try to get really uh, rigid on that. Is that um, will this potentially make me money? And so there's lots of ways. You know, it could be in you know in your car if you're uh, an entrepreneur like I am. I can write off a lot of things. So if I do put something on a credit card, hopefully I'm going to be able to write that off mm -hmm. uh, in in the end. So all right. So that's that's the first one. Stop saving. We we need to. And we need to get real about what inflation is. And so investing and so uh, I think I'm going to go into this uh, on the next couple. But basically what a lot of financial advisors will, will suggest that you do and what people have done in the past and done okay, but not anymore, is invest in the stock market in an index fund um, because over the last you know 100 years, whatever, the stock market has continually gone up, which is true. But for the most part, index funds that is a basket of a whole bunch of different stocks um, does go up, but four or five percent if you're lucky. They shoot for seven percent. Most financial advisors will try to shoot for seven percent. Even that doesn't get you ahead of inflation, but they don't look at the true inflation numbers. So they're like, oh, you're getting seven percent. You're doing really good. That's my wake up call. You're not doing really good. Oh. It, it, you oh. might think so. And society will tell you that you are. And frankly, if you know the people that aren't saving at all, yeah, you're doing you're doing good, but you're not doing enough to live comfortably in your retirement. Right. That's sort of the wake up call. The second one is stop wasting your time with risk profiles. If you go to your financial advisor, the first thing they're going to do is say, "What's your risk profile?" And they're going to base it mostly on your age. If you're young, oh, you have time to be riskier because if the stock market crashes, you will have time to catch up. If you're older, right. maybe you should scale back because if things tank, you won't have as much time to catch up. Okay, fine. That's sort of the average thing. I get it. But if you're if you're one of those that have started to save and you even have a hundred thousand, couple hundred thousand or less, and you're in your forties, fifties, you don't have time. You have to be in that risky profile. And Again, I'm not a financial advisor, and this isn't financial advice, but my view on this is that, you know, there are ways to be in what's considered riskier things. Like, I'm in cryptocurrency. It's considered risky. But I've yeah. the way I invest in it, I don't really see it as that risky. I, you know, I am a believer that Bitcoin will continue to go up and up and up and up, and it will carry the, the cryptocurrency market up. But I'm very careful in what I invest in in cryptocurrency. And so I don't really see it as a risk, but the good news is its return is way over inflation. So that's one answer, Sandy, to that is, is invest in cryptocurrencies. But when I say that, I do have to say you need to work with somebody so that you're not just kind of going in it to blind because you can lose a lot of money if you have no idea what you're doing. Right. But I also will say if you just stick yeah, I, to, to Bitcoin – Right. You know, you're probably okay. I just I just talked to someone yesterday who wanted me to ask you a question about that because uh, one of their friends had gotten, you know, duped in one of the cryptocurrencies and lost a lot of money. So it happens it a lot. It's so important for you to understand what's good, what's not. And you definitely need, a, I think, a consultant just like a financial planner would be. Yeah. Um, and that's what you do, right, Scott? So, yeah, I do. I, I teach people how to invest in, in cryptocurrencies, and I have a really what I consider a sort of low risk method. It's slow. It's 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 kind of boring. I don't really go crazy in all these wild fancy coins or whatever. But I have learned my lesson. I've lost money in crypto. I had to kind of you know learn my lesson. So yeah, let me take that burden on for you. <laughs> right. I learned right. I learned the hard way. Uh, right. So risk profile. Yeah. So we've got to take some risk. Now that also is. Uh, in the stock market, 
what a financial advisor will say is, yeah, just put it into an index fund and and we'll manage it. And so they'll have funds and they'll put it in stocks and bonds and they'll they'll continue to manage that. They'll be charging you fees to do that. And although if you look at it at a one-time situation, uh, the fees don't appear that much, you know, percent or something like that. But over 30 years, those fees really uh, take away into your profit. So, right. so you, I think early on, even early on in your 30s, you, you should, well, they do say you definitely want to take a risk, but you can't take your foot off the pedal. That's kind of, that's my personal advice right. is not to take the foot off the pedal and get more conservative. Um, now, I mean, it's a general thing. I don't mean go crazy and crazy stuff. It just means that instead of investing in a index fund that is a pool of uh, the Dow Jones, which is, have been common in the past, put that into an index fund that is just the NASDAQ. And I'll show a chart here in a minute. You know what? I'm, let me show it now because I'm talking about it. Um, let me just go here and share this. Okay. Actually, I think it's better if I do this one. Okay. So this chart um, is is showing the – this is year to date, all the different assets. So on the left is Bitcoin. So I've already said. So year to date, Bitcoin is uh, giving a rate of return of 42.23%. I don't think that really surprises anybody. Even if you're not following Bitcoin, I think you probably heard that it does really well, but it's volatile, right, and scary, right? Maybe – not the way I teach it, but look at the percentage of return. This is the kind of stuff that I'm hoping will allow me to live comfortably in retirement. Now, I'm not going to just be in Bitcoin. Then there's silver, which is interesting. You've got silver, which is kind of making a comeback. Gold down here at 12, silver at 22%, which is good. I am learning. I will be investing in precious metals. It's not uh, in my holdings now, but I will. But more for like a hedge in case shit hits the fan and the whole system kind of goes down. I want some gold. Um, but yeah, I'll take a 22% return on silver if I have some. Then we've got the NASDAQ, 20%. Okay, that's good. So if you've got an index fund in the NASDAQ, you're earning 20%. That's the kind of returns at the minimum for me is what I want. Now, the S&P 500, which a lot of index funds follow, um, a basket of all these stocks in the S&P 500, that's 15%. That's actually better than I thought it was. It's pretty good. Um, but when you go down to the Dow Jones, which is a lot of a lot of in index funds, that's 3.72. Not that's not good. Um, and and so on. And bonds, you know, bonds right now are terrible. They're just like if you've got bond funds, you're not doing good at all. And a lot of the the funds that uh, financial advisors recommend are bond funds, stock funds, a mix of that. And when I looked at my mix, I still have a my, my IRA, an IRA that that I had when I worked in corporate that's sitting in this mixture. And I haven't just taken the time to kind of pull that out and do the do the riskier things. So I've got to follow my advice because when I looked in it, it's a mixture of bond funds and uh, stock funds, and it's like th earning three percent. And that's not going to cut it. So yeah, I have some Bitcoin, but I need I need the, my whole portfolio to do well. So. So when people say, when I talk about inflation at 14, 15% now, you've got to be at least in this 20%. So if if you are going to invest in stocks or a stock index fund, because you don't want to worry about it and spend all time looking at charts and stuff, then you would go into the NASDAQ and that would do you pretty well. And the NASDAQ is the tech stocks. So um, that's the other thing you know to note here is that... Uh, Right now, it's all about tech. If you're in, if you're in a bundle of stocks that has GE and, you know, Texaco and McDonald's and stuff, those used to do really well. They're not going under. They may pay a dividend, a small dividend, but they're not going to earn you the kind of returns that you're going to need. You're going to need to be in tech stocks, and, you know, even there, people say, well, should I be in the stock market? Well, my answer to that is yes, if you're in the highest index fund, if you don't want to mess with it. If you want to mess with it, yeah, go pick stocks. NVIDIA is up 9,000 or excuse me, over 1,000%. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Microsoft is still up way up. Uh, okay. uh, Facebook, you know, the, the tech stocks are way up. But, right. you know, you'd have to pick those and hopefully early on the better. Most people don't right. want to spend the time to do that. I don't want to spend the time to do that necessarily. So yeah, I, 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 I meta will be in NASDAQ. Yeah. Yeah, you did really well. Right. Uh, well, 
you know, I didn't put much in it. So. If you had a penny or two, uh, still. A penny or two. A yeah. penny or two. Um, let me look at it right now. Let's see. So, I mean, for you to understand this stuff, I think you have to actually do it. That's just my. It's a good um, point. You know. Dabble. Um, Start off with a little bit of money, just like you did. That's what you should my, do. My investments are in Tesla and Amazon. <laughs> there you go. I mean, had you put a couple thousand dollars in each of those, you'd be doing really sweet now. Yeah. Yeah. Had I done that. but Well, I and think about Tesla. I'm still a big Tesla fan. I've got a little bit in Tesla. Um, mm -hmm. I think Tesla's going to, it's kind of st staggering now, but it's going to be big because it's a, mm -hmm. it's an, it's an AI company, not a car company, which well, a lot see, of people now think. now it's saying most traded monthly is NVIDIA. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, I mean, I didn't put much in it. Okay. Let's just be honest. But I still, you're, not. you're, you're getting I your tried. feet wet. You're getting your feet yeah. wet. You're educating yourself. And this is, this is the, how I create my portfolio. Uh, especially when I first started getting to crypto, it's like, I really didn't know what was going on. So I, I went slowly. Mm -hmm. uh, I dipped my toe in. I put a little bit of money. I learned once I got a little bit more comfortable, I put a little bit more in. All right. Mm -hmm. So step number three, don't rely on compound interest. What? Every financial advisor, everybody in, in investment, it's like compound oh, interest dude. is dude. according to Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein said <laughs> compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. It is. And when they trot these charts out, if you go to a financial advisor, they'll trot these charts out and say, if you invest in here at um, you know for 30 years, and they show this big boom. And if you um, only invest this amount and you don't have as many years, then your line goes flat. No, right. compound interest does work. The problem, there's a couple problems. There's a problem. You had to get in early. So if you were 20 or 30 and, and people convinced you to get in early and then you just kept it and, you know, yeah, that's good. Like I did actually get in pretty early in my career. I didn't put very much in, but I've been able right. to, you know, for 20, 30 years, you know, have compound interest, but it, my, my amount wasn't very big. So, uh, but it still was better than nothing. Um, right. The other problem with compound interest is the other thing that compounds is inflation. Ooh. So as inflate as your profits are compounding, so is inflation. So every year, inflation is compounding and eating in to this. So people never think about that. Um, so yeah. it it it's just balancing out. If you didn't have inflation in there, and when inflation is low, yeah, over that 30, 40 year period, your compound interest can be super, super big. But as, inter as uh, inflation gets higher, and it's always been pretty high, higher than what the Fed says, it's always eating right. into that. So if you're just starting out, or in my case, you know, in, in my 50s, starting to wake up to this, uh, and in my 60s, really starting to put the pedal to the metal. Um, you're in your I don't, 60s? What? I don't have, I don't <laughs> have time to... Um, I don't have I don't have the time for compound interest, so it's not going to save me. And a lot of people, yeah. if we looked at those statistics that I started I with, a lot of people aren't saving a lot. So compound interest is not going to save everybody too. So just just everybody talks about compound interest, but it's like it is powerful. But don't don't for, certainly don't say, oh well, I've missed out on compound interest because I didn't invest I thirty did. years ago. <laughs> don't worry. Missed out. You got to keep moving forward. Step number four. Well, I could have, I probably could have lost it by now anyway, right? Yeah. I mean, anything that you have. 2008 that you were talking about. Mm. 2008. I probably would have lost it all. Well, the thing that. is, that, that's, that's true because a lot of people that their retirement savings were cut in half after the 2008 financial. So they've now had to oh. catch back up. They probably, you know, if they continue to invest and, in, you know, they might've caught up by now, but that's the reality is that we are gonna have crashes. If you're in the market and investing, you will have that. And that's why financial advisors do that risk profile. They're like, if the market crashes like in 2008 and the people that were in their 50s and 60s and 70s, they did get hurt. Now, hopefully they had enough to continue, but that's part of the timing. The alternative to not invest because it's like, oh, it could go down, you're guaranteed to have a rough time in your in your retirement. You're guaranteed. Right. So wow. number four is to stop is to stop investing in, in stock and in bond index funds. I've actually already talked about this one. It's just because right. they're unless they're in the NASDAQ or they're in the high tech sector, or you can now add crypto into some of your portfolios through financial advisors or whatever. So 
the bottom line here is the point is, is that you have to get a return above 15%. Anything lower than that is not going to help you out. It's not going to get you where you need to be. That's what I'm saying. Again, personal advice. I'm not a financial advisor because they won't tell you that. But that's what I'm telling you. So, nope. um, so I guess I've, 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 that's how I've answered the, the question. I've answered the questions of basically what you can do. And that is um, you have to invest somewhere, somehow. And instead of being okay with 3 or 4% or even 7%, you need to look now and strive for 20%. And it's, it, 20%. They're, out, they're out there. They're out there. It's just you okay. have to be able to okay – well, I just showed you that that uh, silver, NASDAQ, the S&P 500 right now, well, is 15%. And crypto, yeah. Bitcoin, is up 42%. So right there, wow. actually, everybody okay. should be investing in Bitcoin at some point. If you don't know how, get a hold of me and, and I'll show you. Um, it's not that difficult to get into Bitcoin, uh, really. Now, some of the other cryptocurrencies, you know, it, you need to tread a little bit more lightly. But really, I just stay with the top three the top three market cap uh, in crypto. And then I watch the cycles. I watch the market to see, because it is volatile. It does go up and down. And so I watch those. But that's that's my bottom line is, is you need to be investing. Um, you can be with a financial advisor, but just know that they're probably going to be way more conservative. That's what they're going to recommend than what you really need. There's lots of factors they don't talk about. Their fees alone, which... Um, when you look at it in the 30, 40 year time frame, it, it's huge number. It's, it, it's huge. And so I'm not, I'm not paying anybody to do mine. Now I'm spending a lot of my time investing and learning and watching my portfolio. I didn't do that before. So I feel like I have to now to catch up. One of the things that I'm doing now is learning how to invest in real estate. Real estate is another one that is 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 100 percent return. If you're buying a property and either holding it and renting it out, and um, when when you like I, this weekend, I saw some calculations on some basic property investment stuff, and it really you know it's complicated, which you, know, you have to kind of learn it and take your time with it. Right. But now most real estate investment um, deals that you're going to be in are 20 to 50, 60 percent, and that's what I'm looking for. So um, that's kind of that's kind of what I got on on retirement. What do you think? Now, are you are you like scared? Are you like like or or do you have any bit of hope? Or you know, what do you think? <laughs> huh. Well, all of the things that we learned uh, over the last twenty or so years, right? We were taught savings exactly all the traditional ways. And now we are seeing that all of those systems are eroding and crashing. So we do have to start thinking out of the box and we do. And, and so for myself, I am going to start, start with silver. Like you talked about, um, you started me on the Bitcoin, uh, lane and I'll continue to try to do some of that. And then next for me is the real estate investment. So we will see. We'll see yeah. how it all pans out. And, you know, I know Social Security hopefully will be around when I need it, but maybe it might not be. I don't know. And that's the problem is that the unknown is not certain for here in our country. So I think that you need to really start to think about how will you live? What will you trade? What will you sell? You know, all of those things, you know. So we, we, I mean, as we get older, you know, we do want some kind of comfortability. And, and, and honestly, the future of a lot of things are not 100% certain right now. Uh, there's a lot of, yeah, ever were. uncertainty. They, they, I think that was something that we were sold as to be true. That wasn't. And back to the name of our show, which is truth bomb. The truth is, is that it was never stable and that we just didn't know that. And our parents didn't know that, you know, they, they thought, well, this is how you do it. You do a savings account, then you do, you know, buy a house, then you, you know, retire in that house and die, you know, <laughs> pretty much 
that's what they have been taught is the uh, success. That's what success looks like. And the millennials, believe it or not, have have taught us something. I mean, I know that we don't think we can learn some things from millennials, but I don't think that's true. I think they are actually showing us ways to be creative also on how to live. You know, it's, it's interesting. The millennials are very minimalists, um, which is interesting considering our generation above us, even they were not, they were hoarders uh, pretty much. They hoarded everything. Like my grandmother had that big old ball of aluminum foil that she saved. You know, oh my gosh, really? It was worth something. Wow. Supposedly. Aluminum and ball. Aluminum foil. She would, save, she would save the blue Vicks VapoRub glasses because right. she thought that one day that blue glass would be worth something. Oh, that's interesting. I, you know, it's funny because uh, that I. Like, people do say that stuff because they're hoarders. Like, oh, I'll need that someday. Um, but, yeah, at least she was thinking about maybe it'll be more valuable. She and she wrote a note that said, this might be worth something later. And and what's funny about that, I actually have a bottle right now of kind of Vicks. It's plastic. It's plastic, it's plastic. yeah. <laughs> make it into plastic. But it's blue. Right? It's in the still. It'll make it's it look blue. blue. But, see, I still do have a Vicks Vapo Rub glass that she saved in my little antique um, thing. So she saved silver spoons. She wow. saved silver anything. Wow. And put it into an antique. Um, well, they grew up in the depression and right. And she did. they lived she, through it. She was in the depression. She was born in 1910. So she remembers the depression because they had to move to a chicken farm and it was really cold in this farmhouse that they stayed in and they had to use the irons in the fire to put it at the foot of the bed to heat the oh, bed wow. yeah. when they slept. Um, she literally had the ice box. She always called our refrigerator an ice box because that's where the ice went in and that's, you know, that's how you kept your stuff refrigerated. We could have um, learned some things, right? From, from, I did from learn. people. And I, and I, I did well, learn. Okay, she and that's good. She was a minimalist. Now, that you this, learned. Now she, she was a minimalist at first. And then she started to collect frogs. <laughs> 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 she left me 270-something frogs. Anyway. Ribbit. Besides that. But ribbit, right. So if anybody wants some frog collection. My daughter loves frogs. No. I'll have to come okay, look at your well, collection. I have some. All right. I have 200. Well, we could probably learn something from those from that generation because I think since most of us haven't lived through that, we really we really don't understand how to live bef beneath our means and mainstream media consumerism like like nowhere in now, society do they want us to. They want us to spend so, spend so spend. So you had you had different parents than I had. So my parents um, lived in downtown St. Louis. So they were poor. Okay. So they grew up kind of poor ish and, and everybody lived together. So the grandparents, the parents and the kids all lived in one flat in downtown St. Louis. And so that's how everybody lived. Yeah. And so when my mom got married to my dad, they, he went into the military and they moved out and everything, but both my parents were credit card parents. Now that's interesting, right? Like they didn't learn how to save because their parents didn't save. Right. Because they lived in downtown where they had to always rent a flat and the okay. family had to live together. So totally different circumstances, right? So so they didn't really buy the American dream, so to speak. Um, they believed in you know, they, they were poor. So, um, you know, my mom did buy a house. She was in mortgage banking actually. So it makes sense. She bought a house. Um, but we moved a lot. So we never stayed somewhere long enough for her to make the equity out of it, you know? And then my dad though has now lived in the same house for 20 plus years. So, you know, he's made some equity in his home and, and all that, but, I mean, he feels like a, like he's made it as a success because he owns a home yeah. that is almost paid for. So, 
so he did finally get to where he thought, okay, I'm, you know, kind of made it. So, um, and he's an entrepreneur. So, you know, he, it was interesting. They used their credit cards to, to leverage. And so, um, I did learn that, I guess, um, a little bit. Um, so I'm kind of on the fence about that though. Cause I, I look around, I've done a lot of genealogy and I go, Oh my gosh, my, my ancestors owned 300 acres up the road here from where I live right now. And of hmm. course from generations have sold it and blah, blah, you know, I mean, there's a lot of controversy around that because of course it's Jamestown, Williamsburg and hmm. all that. So yeah. it wasn't their land to start anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, you know, I mean, I think in real estate is a true investment now. Um, and so I think that's, I think it's important. Silver, real estate, and go with, with uh, Scott on the crypto. Yeah. That's how I think about it. Well, and, and this is why I talk a lot about finances and the economy now, uh, because Freedom Life 3.0 for me means um, financial freedom. There's lots of, lots of areas, you know, that it means, you know, freedom from, you know, tyranny and the, and the global elite that have agenda. But, you know, they, their biggest agenda is, is, is money and power and, you know, money and power together. Mm -hmm. So just to kind of wrap this up, my view on this is that, that, you know, if, almost if you can't beat them, join them, it's like, we can't really, you know, what can I do about these global elites? Really? It's like, you know, the income equality is getting bigger and bigger. Well, one thing I can do is just try to up my financial quotient, you know, if, if you will, and try to right. do it the way, the way some of these richer people do it. They, they buy property, they own assets. You have to own assets because even in these inflationary times, well, a property is they not go considered up. an asset though. Property is considered a liability. So in, in the, in the categories, if, if <laughs> it's not paid it's off, you, know. you got a loan against it. Yeah. yeah. Right. 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 So you have to be careful on how you do all that, but, um, you can actually borrow off of equity. Um, so you can actually make some good deals if you're smart about it. Um, yeah. Borrow. So what we did is, is in our house, um, when I was married, uh, we would borrow against our equity and then put it back into the house. I wouldn't do that again today because that's probably not really getting me ahead. It's just we wanted nicer a nicer house, so we would put it back into the house. Um, thought we were doing the right thing. A lot of times, if you think you're going to put uh, additions into your house, or not additions, but you know, upgrade your house, and then you think it's going to sell for more, it really doesn't. Um, no. You've got to add a bedroom, a bathroom, or a swimming pool, or something like that. But if you're just making it nicer, you think, oh, well, it's going to sell for more. It usually doesn't. Um, but if you borrow against your equity and then go invest it where you can earn 20% or more, there you go. That, yeah. I think, makes sense you know, to do. And so um, there, there's a lot of complexities to it. But th I shied away from complexity and risk most of my life. My dad was very conservative. He was a local uh, town banker, just was a conservative guy. And I had to finally realize when I got into crypto that it's okay to take some risk, but just do it smartly. Go slow. Don't be crazy about it. And if you do that, at least for me, I just realized, hey, I can handle these complex sort of seemingly risky things. Just go slow and believe you can do it. And frankly, I really have no choice, you know, so I've got to take the risk if I want to live comfortably. And I, yeah, play so that's, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> just play Monopoly. Play Monopoly, people. I always hated Monopoly. Honestly, I did. Really? Because I hated when people stole my properties. They like, stole them? No. Well, when they didn't they, they buy they, them? Well, they had to buy them, but <gasps> that's not stealing, that's not, is it? Well, yeah. Well, they were allowed to buy them, and I was. Like, <laughs> and they keep my properties. Steal them. Oh, play know. Monopoly. <laughs> play Monopoly, folks. All right, we're going to wrap Monopoly. it up. Seriously. So thanks for uh, thanks for listening. Tune in. Hope you enjoyed the show. Go ahead and comment. Let us know if you learned anything and or if uh, you'd like any other topics that we talk about on the Truth Bomb Show. And uh, we'll see you next time. All right. Bye. Bye.